Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Health Matters, a comprehensive chat by the Islamic Medical Association, your regular medical and health show on a Tuesday night. And tonight we are discussing uh, pulmonology with our pediatric pulmonologist, Dr. Riaz Khan, uh, pediatric pulmonologist from the Chris Hani Paraguanath Academic Hospital and doing some limited private work. Assalamu alaikum, Riaz. Alaikum salam, Yaakov. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, ya Rabbil Alameen, wa laqibatu lil muttaqeen, wa salatu wa salam wa ala ashrafil mursaleen, Sayyidina Muhammadu wa alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Tonight's uh, tarbiyah is a short hadith from Hadith al-Qudsi, where Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu related that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah azza wa jal said, the son of Adam displeases me by abusing the time, whereas I myself the time. In my hand lay all the things, and I am the one who causes the revolution of the day and night. Once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he causes the day and night and controls time, abusing time is a bad deed that should not happen. And precisely abusing time is in essence not something that is permissible in Islam and it has to be utilized to its maximum. And we know from the Quran in Surah Al As that by the token of time, Allah says that you are at a loss unless you utilize the time to the best in doing good and inviting to good. And with Ramadan coming up, I thought this is appropriate. We are only 30 days away and perhaps we should start getting into that mode where we start utilizing a more time in a useful manner, in a beneficial way, and pleasing the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas tonight's topic is the preschool visa. And I just want to clarify that we're referring to the patient being a child from the age of, from birth up to the age of five, and not to the parent who starts getting short of breath and wheezing before the child has to go to school. So you just want to clarify that because I'm sure all parents get a bit nervous before the children go to school, eh? Yes, no, ab absolutely. Um, okay. So when we're talking about a preschool visa, Jacob, uh, we're referring to a young child, uh, as you said, between the age of zero and five, who's wheezing, you know, who's got some a lower airway obstruction. That's what we're referring to. Okay, so what is this wheezing? Because obviously it, it's a, in, in medical terminology, it's a sound that we doctors and medical practitioners uh, are, are trained to listen to wheezing. But what do you refer to by what is wheezing? Uh, and slide four will possibly show us uh, some detail while Riaz discusses that. Okay, so by, by wheezing, we mean they are simply musical sounds of long duration with a prolonged expiratory phase. And they believe to be caused by oscillation of the airways, Jacob. Okay. What happens is the airways come together. Right. And as the air travels through a narrowed airway, that causes a sound. And it's typically um, it's between the second and the seventh generation of airways where you get this wheezing taking place. Okay, so that is one form of sound that takes place that you can hear. The parents, do they hear the sound? Yes, so what, what, what they found in studies is that what parents take for, say, are wheezing and what doctors say are, we are wheezing is not necessarily the same thing. What's so the difference? The, the difference is um, when a doctor says a child's wheezing, he's obviously listened with a trained uh, ear, he's used his stethoscope, he's established that there's lower airway obstruction. And what a parent may say is wheezing may not necessarily be wheezing. It could be uh, another sound, for example, called strido or, or stertor, um, which can be similar to wheezing, but it's actually a termino terminology called a noisy breathing that, that we refer to. So there's various types of sounds that a sick child makes, and some of it could be wheezing, and some of it could be noisy breathing. Absolutely correct. All right. And in, in noisy breathing, there are different uh, particular conditions that cause that. That's, that's correct, yes. Okay. So slide three may show us some noisy breathing uh, information, and maybe you can explain a little bit. So the, 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 main, the main thing to try and differentiate is, is your noisy breathing wheezing or is it stridal? And um, 
Wheezing is de generally lower area obstruction and stridor refers to upper area obstruction. But it's, it's usually the, um, the medical practitioner who can decide whether a sound is wheezing or stridor, not generally uh, apparent. Okay. Patients phone us sometimes, you know, without coming in. And they say, you know what, my child is, sometimes they say he's wheezing, my child is making some funny sounds, and then sometimes they say the child is grunting. What is grunting? Okay, grunting is something completely different. Mm -hmm. Grunting refers to um, severe upper area obstruction where the glottis is closed and uh, the child is actually gasping for air. So grunting is a sign of severe respiratory distress, Jakob. It's usually seen in newborn babies that are hypoxic and it's often seen in children with pneumonia as well. So if a child is grunting, he should be taken to a doctor immediately. So, okay, so that's a danger sign. Absolutely correct. Okay. Mm. All right. So we're going to get back to the topic now, which is the, the focus is on wheezing in, in a child that's in a preschool age. There is some natural history and some study that was done some time ago and uh, where you had different categories of this particular condition. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about the natural history, uh, slide six. Yes, so in, in 1980, and between 1980 and 1984, in Tucson, Arizona, Jakob, they did a large study with 826 newborns, mm -hmm. where they looked at them at, uh, at birth, again at three years, and again at six years. And what they did is they did lung function tests for these children before they got ill. They did skin prick tests for them and they did um, IgE tests as well. And then they asked the parents to monitor these children at three years of age and again at six years of age with questionnaires. And then uh, when the child was sick, they asked the parents to take the child to a pediatrician to get these questionnaires filled in. Okay, so while the slides are coming up, I think slide six you want up, uh, you mentioned a few things that they tested, right? Skin prick and IgE, was that allergy testing? Correct, yes. The, the IgE test was done at birth. Mm -hmm. It was done again at nine months and again at six years. And the skin prick test is an allergy test that they do on, on the skin to test for different allergens. Things right. that can cause different conditions, and one yes. of them being wheezing. Correct, yeah. Okay, so, so what were the findings? Well, what they found is that the majority of children um, do not wheeze. More than 51% of them had no wheezing at all. Okay? okay? And then they had a second group of children with early, what you call the early transient wheezes. Okay. If you look at slide six. Slide six, six or slide seven. In the, earl in the Six, early transient yeah. wheezes, these children here had decreased lung function at birth. And in these children, the mothers themselves smoked in pregnancy. Okay. Okay. And these children had congenitally small airways, and they are predisposed to wheeze early in life. As these children's airway grow, they stop wheezing. And, and was there an explanation for that or just what is normally happening in that group of children? No. Uh, it was just so a finding? It's just a finding, yeah. Okay. Because remember, if your airways are, are, are narrowed, yeah. uh, it's harder for air to go through. Okay. As your airway is wider, it's easier for the air th to go through, so you won't hear the, the wheezing sound. So it could have been age-related at Absolutely. that early Absolutely, it's age-related. Okay, yes. and then the next one, they found uh, children with some persistent wheezing, slide 7. Yes, so with the persistent wheezing, here the children were wheezing at the age of three years of age as well as six years of age. And here these, these mums had asthma. These children were born without any um, alteration of lung function. They had atopic diseases, they had allergic rhinitis, and they wheezed when they were not sick. Okay, and these children also had uh, and your cynophilic count of more than 4%. And we'll get back to that a bit later. So, you, so the first group didn't have any atopic signs? Correct. The second group had some atopic signs? Correct. So then the allergic component started surfacing in that particular group? Yes, correct. Okay, and then the rest of the group? So the, the last group was a group called the late onset wheezes. 
That's slide eight. In, in this group of children, they did not wheeze at three years, but they only wheeze at six years of age. And what they found was most of these children were, were, were male, and males are thought to have smaller airways for the size of their lungs compared to girls in early life. These moms had asthma, and they also had allergic rhinitis in the first year of life. So in your interpretation of this particular study, and that took a clock, what, 35 years ago? You're correct, yes. Uh, anything new that has come out, or that seems to be like the natural history? Well, that is actually, th you know, that, that's the one of the largest studies done in the world about the natural history of wheezing. Mm -hmm. But we, there is another study where they look at wheezing in a slightly different way. And here, if you look at slide um, 10, mm -hmm. we have a temporal pattern of wheezing where the European Respiratory Society Task Force had a different treatment guide. Here they, they said they divided wheezing into preschool um, children, into episodic viral wheeze or multi-trigger wheeze. And the main difference is this. A child who's got episodic viral wheeze will wheeze with a viral infection. A child with a multi-trigger wheeze would, we would wheeze with viral infections as well as irritants or um, emotional factors, cold, other triggers will also cause wheezing and this we call the multi-trigger wheeze. So in summary you get children that are wheezing and there are different causes and some of them is just a natural history where they will wheeze in early life and will just stop. You'll get those that will have a persistent type of wheeze and there could be different trigger factors for that and some will have an early onset and some will have a late onset. Yes. All right, so we'll take the discussion further on this and the lines will also be opened after the ad break and inshallah we'll see you shortly. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Health Matters, a comprehensive chat by the Islamic Medical Association. Tonight we have Dr. Riaz Khan, pediatric pulmonologist. It's quite a mouthful, Riaz. Yes? Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway, we were discussing preschool wheezes, children in the preschool age that are wheezing. And something that really concerns parents, and the first thing that parents think of these days, or even previously, was my child is wheezing, he's got asthma. But we know that all that wheezes is not asthma. So your comment on that? Yes, no, that, that's very true, Jacob. You know, especially in a young child, um, in fact, the commonest cause of wheezing in young children is an upper respiratory tract viral infection. Okay. Can you explain a little more? Sure. So basically, we're looking at a child with uh, a runny nose, a cough, a mild fever, who's a little unwell. And he's probably got um, an influenza infection or a rhinovirus infection. And he may have some lower respiratory tract um, airway obstruction and he may wheeze occasionally. That's the common scenario you're looking at. Your, your other mo much more common, uh, just as common diagnosis you're looking at is something like called bronchiolitis. You know, which we in the season for now, mm. uh, especially caused by respiratory syncytial virus, where the, the children... Um, have, have wheezing, they not not feeding well, they're coughing, they have shortness of breath, and sometimes they're severe enough to be admitted to hospital. Okay, so there's obviously what we call in medical terms a differential diagnosis, right? So a child is wheezing, a parent comes in, child's got various symptoms, some of them you describe flu-like symptoms, cold symptoms, they could be wheezing, bronchiolitis is common. But there are a whole host of other things that can fall in that category that you would consider. And it's not just asthma on its own, because asthma, although being common, and also that it can be a chronic diagnosis, we don't just mm. jump into that diagnosis. Mm. So maybe we can discuss some of those conditions. But before we do that, viewers, mm. please, the number is on the bottom of your screen, uh, 11 086 or one or two or three. Dr. Khan is here. He's actually quite keen to answer your questions. Mm. It's his pet topic, so please take advantage of that, inshallah. Mm. Uh, but while we're waiting for the calls, uh, perhaps slides 22 and 23 will come to this differential with other things you would consider in a wheezy mm. child. Mm. Absolutely. So, so Jacob, the, the important um, differentials to look at... Um, Slide 22. Mm. I mean, there's different ways that you can do it. 
Um, the one is to try and think of, um, the, the way I like to do it is mm. to, to look at the bronchus itself. Okay, so okay. we've got some pictures there. Yeah, so that's a beautiful bronchus you're okay. looking at. Is that so the air pipe, right? Correct. The yeah. normal one on the left and the... the, the, the Abnormal one on the right. Yeah. That's right. Okay, so the, way, the easy way to try and work it out is, is, the, is the, the problem in the wall itself of that air pipe, right? Okay. Or, meaning something called bronchomalacia, that simply implies that the wall is weak from okay, whatever Before we, we continue, let's sure. take the caller. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, so look, we were talking about the different diagnoses. Uh, inshallah, the callers, please do call in again if you've lost the call. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me, sister? Okay, Riaz, so mm. you were talking about the different causes, right? Because yes. of the of the of the airway, yes. and that's what you're referring to as the lumen, right? Lumen, yes. Okay. So, so you can get uh, an obstruction in the lumen itself, mm -hmm. like intraluminal causes, and the commonest one we see at hospital is is uh, tuberculosis, okay. specifically endobronchial TB. Okay. Okay. And uh, another important cause to look for is a foreign body. You know, and we've seen children with uh, peanuts sitting in their bronchi. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen pen caps sitting okay. in there. Um, so there's many different things that can be done. Kids can get challenge. up to all kinds of things. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. But tell me, are those medical emergencies, or you want to just perhaps tell the viewers? Look, a foreign body is certainly an an, a medical emergency. Okay. You know, and and uh, the clue that 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 tells the the general practitioner this is, this is an emergency is. Or, or the clue to the diagnosis first mm. is a, a sudden onset of a cough, yeah. um, usually after the, the child's been playing. Okay. Okay. And um, and and your wheezing, importantly, is localized. It's not in both sides of the chest. It's so only it's on one one side. one side of the chest. Yeah. Okay. We'll get back to that. There's a good important point. A medical emergency also is part of the diagnosis today. We got a caller. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, uh, perhaps they will call back, inshallah. Uh, and what other common things? You mentioned in a hospital setting, TB, uh, what mm. you call endotracheal bronchitis, uh, foreign bodies. More often in the community setting, do we see those kind of things? Or again, it depends on which community we're dealing with, eh? No, actually, endobronchial TB is quite common, right. even in the community. Okay. You know, uh, Tuberculosis is one of the commonest diseases we see in South Africa right. at the moment. Um, and children get TB from adults. So if an adult is not treated and is coughing at home, mm. then the child is likely to get TB. But if you haven't thought about a diagnosis of TB, you're not going to be di diagnosing TB. Okay, we have a caller. Assalamu alaikum. Don't know some kind of problem with the callers coming in today. Uh, I think the technical guys will look into that. Okay, so we'll just continue. Right? So then, look, mm. in this discussion, obviously, we've got uh, asthma is in the background when, when parents think of a wheezy child. You've got the bronchiolitis. One of the things that happens is, is we find at this time of the year, uh, bronchiolitis being very, very common, mm. right? And we find patients coming to us, and I'm sure this is something that, that most people want to know, mm. they tend to do some kind of self-management at home. And they start mm. managing their children. Uh, they think the child is wheezing, and they start managing the child mm. with some steam inhalations and humidifier. Mm. Uh, what's your view on that? Do you mm. recommend it? Is it a good thing to do? Is it beneficial? Mm. Okay, so, so steam inhalation, um, most of the studies haven't actually proved that it actually works, okay? And it's, it's usually more problems associated with steam inhalation because the uh, humidifier has to be clean and sterilized. So you actually might have 
bacteria and viruses sitting in that steam, in that, in that uh, humidifier. And unless you've cleaned it properly, I wouldn't actually recommend it. If, you, if you've got a very dry climate uh, and you've got a young child and you want to use a bit of humidifier occasionally in the morning, then it's, it's okay. It, it, it won't cause harm, providing you've sterilized it properly and you know how to use it, Jacob. So it has some limited benefit, and, yes. and and obviously the person that's doing it has to know that you know there are certain conditions. Otherwise, you can just mm. worsen the condition. You can. Okay. You can. You can worsen the, the lower air of lower airway obstruction. Okay. Mm. Another common practice is people borrowing family members' medication. Yes. That my child is wheezing, so so your child is also wheezing. Yes. Uh, here's my nebulizer. Yes. Do some nebulization. Yes. Can it be done? Will it be harmful if the child doesn't have asthma, or he has no other? Uh, whether whether nebulization, the medication that's being used, which is generally something to dilate the bronchus and the anti-inflammatory, yes. if it is not appropriate, will it be harmful? Okay, let's let's start with the positive effects first. Okay. Okay. So, in in a child that's severely um, has got severe airway obstruction, and you're using a bronchodilator it can help the child in an emergency, you know, and there it's actually uh, got a call. recommended. That's it. That's okay. Okay. Salaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salaam. How are you, sister? Alhamdulillah, and you? Alhamdulillah. You can go ahead with your question. Um, okay, I just wanted to ask the doctor, I have a, a five-month-old baby. Uh, when my baby was two months old, she developed bronchiolitis, and she started wheezing, and she was wheezing ever since. Um, and now she's almost five months old and she's never stopped wheezing. Um, we've taken her to many pediatricians, to different doctors. Uh, they've put her on uh, pumps. They, uh, they've, uh, we've done nebulizing. Uh, uh, we've been given the Monty S sprinkles that we've had to put her on. Um, eventually doctors say that she's, they call her now the happy wheezer. Um, so, uh, Alhamdulillah, she's well like that, but she's on and off, she's always wheezing and she tends to get sick uh, more often than not. Um, was it? Uh, she, uh, recently she had an ear infection, um, so it's just been ongoing and the wheeze always tends to be there. Um, so I'm just concerned about that. I don't know what to do or where to go from here. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Uh, tell me, was your child born prematurely? Sister, can you hear doctor's question? Was the child born prematurely? Uh, no, the child was not born prematurely. She was on term. Okay, and uh, did you smoke in your pregnancy? Did you smoke in your pregnancy? No. <laughs> no, okay. And uh, is the child's weight going up? My husband smoked. <laughs> your husband smoked, okay, fine. Okay, so. Look, uh, I mean, uh, we're going we're gonna to come to that a bit later, but environmental tobacco smoke, uh, Jakub, mm. is a trigger for wheezing. Okay. You know, so that alone can explain why your child may still be wheezing. Do you have asthma, uh, sister? Is it, do you have asthma? I don't, but there is a family history uh, of asthma in the family. Okay. Uh, does and does your child have any uh, allergic rhinitis or food intolerance? Um, I mean, milk intolerance. Any milk intolerance, sister? Not that we know of, but uh, no. we do have her on a hypoallergenic formula. Okay, but is her weight going up compared to birth? Is she picking up weight? She is gaining weight, but not, um, uh, you know, she was born at 3.6 kilos and now she's 6.2. So okay. according to the chart, they say she's a little underweight. Okay. Okay, and where, are, you, are you using a bronchodilator to help her? You're using the Mont Air sprinkles and what else are you using? Uh, they've given us uh, the a, a Fox Air, a, a pump to use. And we just do occasional nebulizing. Okay. If, she, uh, if you have, after using the bronchodilator, does the child feel better? Any improvement on the Fox Air? 
No, we actually don't find much of a difference. Mm. So um, actually one of the, the uh, one of the pediatricians in Polokwani where I live said we should actually mm. maybe just stop it because she might mm. actually not be, uh, she might not be asthmatic. Mm. So this may be a thing that she's not asthmatic and is a wheezy child. Yes, no, absolutely. I mean, this is quite a common problem we see. What, what advice can we give, so, sister? So what I would say is I would actually advise you to if the if the bronchodilator is not helping, sister, I would stop that. Okay. Can you can you hear Dr. Khan, sister? No, I can't. Okay. Can I I'll, I'll put the volume up on my? TV? No, no, it's fine. You can just put your TV off. Gee. And then maybe you can hear him. Okay, my TV is off. All right. What he's saying is, look, the Foxa is probably not helping according to you. Gee. So then maybe you should stop the Foxa. Okay. And then what else there? I would also stop the the. And you can stop the Monte Lucas, the Monte S sprinkles. Okay. All right. And then? I'll try and get your husband to stop smoking. And the husband shouldn't be smoking around the child at the minimum. Okay. Okay. And then, I mean, as you've said, you know, it sounds like a happy wheezer for now. So he's a happy wheezer for now. But Gee. he needs to be reassessed when he's a bit older, when he's at least, you know, nine months or, or um, at least a year. What, what happens is, you know, the fact that he's a boy, he's probably got a smaller area as well, which is another predisposing factor for wheezing. As he gets older, he will stop wheezing, inshallah. But we have to watch him at a later stage to make sure he doesn't develop asthma at a later stage. But at, at this stage, you know, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't call this asthma, yeah. judging by, from, from what you told me. So in the interim, uh, sister, did you get all of that? No, I didn't. Okay, what doctor is saying that basically you will stop the two medications we spoke about. Uh, try and get your husband to stop smoking, at least Gee. around the child or in the house. Okay. And then uh, to monitor him regularly. Being a male, he's got a smaller airway and he may get to a point where his breathing will get a bit better. Gee. So uh, just to monitor him regularly. Obviously, if the wheezing continues, then get the pediatrician to see him again and review the diagnosis. Okay. But he's a happy wheezer, so you could just, at the moment, not do too much intervention. Okay. And then just okay. monitor and watch him. Watch how it goes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Jazakallah. Okay. Jazakallah. Jazakallah okay. for the call. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum salam. So basically, that's the scenario. A very mm. good uh, question, because this mm. is a common scenario, mm. and uh, there are a lot of mothers. Uh, that, that have this kind of problem where they're giving multiple mm. medications mm. but obviously there's no improvement but they feel if they're going to withdraw the medication the child is mm. going to get worse so we'll mm. take an ad break and then we'll mm. come back to you after the ad break and hopefully we'll get more calls from you uh, inshallah assalamu alaikum <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Health Matters, a comprehensive chat. We're discussing the preschool visa with Dr. Riyas Khan, a pediatric pulmonologist, and I do believe we have a caller. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, while they put the caller through, Riyas, we're discussing this differential diagnosis. So, all that wheezes, again, I'm repeating, uh, is not asthma. We spoke about bronchiolitis, which is far more common. Mm. We just had a very good question from a caller who, whose child is wheezing, but there's no real clear-cut evidence that it's asthma, but they've already been given asthma medication. Mm. So your rem re recommendation was to withdraw and monitor. Mm. So is that falling into your differential that you can monitor certain patients, although you don't know what is happening? Because yes. what can happen in these scenarios is this mm. patient can end up mm. going for a whole lot of tests and chest x-rays mm. and bronchoscopies and, mm. and, and anxiety factor, cost factor. Mm. So how do you work this out? So, so the good way to differentiate is, Yaqub, is to see if the child is well right. and not, or not well. Yeah. And that's usually a clinical judgment by the doctor himself. Okay. So if a child is uh, not thriving, meaning his weight is, is uh, plummeting, or his, his... We've got a caller. Can we take a caller? Sure. As-salamu alaykum. Alaykum as-salam. Hi, brother. Hello. Hello, can you hear us? As-salamu alaykum, how are you? Walaykum as-salam, alhamdulillah, khair. Go ahead with your question. I've got a question about a four-year-old daughter. The last four or five months, uh, during the middle of the night, around about 12 to 2 o'clock, 
she gets up coughing non-stop. Okay? Like she's gasping for air. We've tried nebulizing her. We've tried uh, cough syrups. But it's only during the night. During the day, there's no cough. What can be the cause? It can it be an allergy? Or what, or what, you, or what, you, what you think it could be? You got the question. I got the question, yes. Uh, brother, um, when she plays sport, is she coughing as well? Hello? Brother, can you hear doctor's questions? Hello? Hello. How old is she? She's four, year old, four, four years old. Oh, Dr. Khan is asking when she plays sport, when she's exercising or running, does she cough? Uh, no. She doesn't. It's uh, does she during the night. Does she cough in the morning? Can it be an allergy or what can it be? Does she cough in the morning? Uh, in the morning when she wakes up, yes. She, she does cough but in the during morning. During the yeah? entire day, nothing. Nothing. Hey? Is there a history of asthma in the family, either yourself or the wife? Anybody in the family got a history of asthma like you or the wife? No, no, no asthma at all. No, eh? Hey? No smokers in the family. Okay. Nothing. Was she premature at birth? Was she premature at birth? Not no. Look, it, it, certainly, it certainly could be asthma, okay? Um, but obviously, you know, you, you need to take her to a, a, a pediatrician. I would, I would... Has she seen a pediatrician? Suggest? Yes, she has been to the doctor. No, no, but a pediatrician or a GP? Yeah. No, a pediatrician. And, and what, was the, what was his uh, take on the whole thing? He said nebulize her at, for, at, at first. We tried that. For a day or two, it, is a bit of a, uh, it helps, but, it helps. but thereafter, it's persistent. And it's only during the last four or five months while she started school. Is she allergic to something? Or can it be a touch of asthma? Or what, what do you think? What can it be? Okay, okay l let's deal with the uh, allergic question first. Sure, she could... Hear the doctor speaking. Yeah, the yeah, doctor says it could be an allergy. So there's possibly an allergic component. Okay. Okay, but, uh, but what's the best thing to use now? What's the next step? What's the best no. thing to do now? No, no, it's it's not as easy as yeah. that. Okay. You know, you it is much much more complicated than that, brother. You know, it could be an allergy. Okay. However, the fact that your child has responded to a bronchodilator, okay, suggests it could still be asthma. Okay. Brother, so what he's saying is because the nebulization helped her, yeah. she could be asthmatic. So it's not straightforward. There could be allergy, there could be asthma. Ha has she been on a course of uh, an inhaled corticosteroid? Did she take or any pumps? An oral steroid? No, never gave her a pump. Did she take any cortisone, like, you know, Espelone or Preflam or. No, we gave her uh, my solvent linkers. Right. Okay. And then we gave her uh, another cough syrup. Uh, they mix it with another cough syrup. Okay, but uh, do you know if they gave any? The name. Do you know if they gave any cortisone medication? No, no cortisone. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. you know the cough is like a whooping cough. You know the whooping cough, and the dry chest. Okay, so um, brother, it sounds like like your child. Um, you know, the fact nocturnal cough and early morning cough is quite suggestive of asthma, asthma yeah. in in a young child of of. True four years of age. And the fact that your child is still coughing, you know, uh, to me, suggests she not, might need a cord of inhaled corticosteroids. So I, I, would, I would suggest go back to your pediatrician, okay, and explore the possibility of asthma with him. And, and you know, I think your child might benefit from a short course of uh, oral corticosteroid with an, inhale, with, an, with an inhaler and an aero chamber and, and then see if the symptoms abate after, after that. Did you get all of that, brother? No, no, the doctor, when he's talking, you can't hear a thing. Okay, let me just tell you what he said, all right? Yeah. Basically, it's most likely that she's got asthma. So you need to go back to your pediatrician most probably, and it's yeah. probably a good idea that she must go on to a pump, what we call an inhaled corticosteroid pump. And they okay, give you a little spacer. They give you a spacer so that she can coordinate her breathing with that. And in the meantime, also in the to start of the treatment, may need some oral cortisone also. And then you can monitor her that way and see how she responds. Because the fact that she's got a night cough and an early morning cough 
is highly suggestive of asthma. Oh, okay. But again, it's not a final diagnosis, so you need to go okay. back. The fact that she responded to the nebulization is again another suggestion that it could be asthma. And there still could be an allergic trigger, something that's triggering this asthma. Oh, okay. All right. So you go back to the pediatrician, review yeah. the thing. You're going to have to possibly add on a few more medication and then see how she responds and take it from there. Okay. All right. Mm. Okay. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Jazakallah for the call. Eh? Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. All right. Mm. So that was again a good question and it's a common mm. scenario. Mm. Again, where uh, there's almost like a partial treatment scenario where there's mm. a suggestion there's an asthma. Mm. Asthma medication is working to a point, but no final diagnosis made. Mm. And uh, so the follow-up and all that is pretty important because doing lung functions at that age, mm. I I it's a difficult thing? A absolutely difficult. Right. Yeah. I mean, most, most uh, doctors wouldn't have access to, to do lung functions yes, for a child, for yes. child of, yeah, of, yeah, of yeah, that yeah. age. Obviously, yes. In a child that's older, Yaakov, yeah. you know, above five, above six, yeah. You know, you can do a nice uh, spirometry, yeah. you can check for airflow yeah, obstruction, yeah, yeah. you can give a bronchodilator, and you can see reversibility. Yeah. But in a young child, uh, it's very difficult. So here, basically, what you're doing is almost like empirical treatment, right? Correct. Like trial of medication. Yes. So we're giving anti-asthma medication. If it works, yeah. it's most likely asthma. Correct. You give anti-asthma medication, doesn't work, most likely it's not asthma. Correct. Okay, yeah, so, correct. Yeah, so basically, I think that's the approach for now in terms of the very young child mm -hmm. who doesn't have access to, to, to firstly a pediatric pulmonologist and then, uh, but has to be followed up, not to ignore it uh, and then look at other factors. So if there are smokers mm -hmm. and trigger factors, uh, you've got to look at that kind of thing. We have another caller, Assalamu Alaikum. Mm -hmm. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Okay, yes, yeah, so hmm. I think everybody's leading towards this asthma tonight, although we, we hmm. thought we'll just discuss the wheezing yes. to get the asthma out of the way or, or other things out of the way and come to asthma. Hmm. But it, I perhaps reached a point where hmm. you, you maybe want to touch on that. Sure. Let's, okay, let's so uh, you've you got some kind of uh, objective thing, you, uh, something like an index to suggest an asthma predictive index that you mentioned earlier? Yes. Uh, so I don't know if slide 11 can come up uh, that may just help us in the discussion. So, Yako, with this asthma predictive index, what they've done, remember we discussed the studies earlier. Yeah. Right? There so, we go. So, yeah. so what they did, they did was, mm. with all their studies, they found mm. that if a child is less than three years old, mm. he's having recurrent episodes of wheezing, mm. right? And he's got one of these two, either, either one of Two major criteria. Sorry, guys, we got a call. Okay. Let's hope we can get. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, you can maybe just put up slide 11 again. We're discussing the ESMA predictive index. So, a as we said, if you have one major criteria or two minor criteria, then it means the child has a positive ESMA predictive index. Which means what? which means there's a greater likelihood that this child has asthma. Okay. Okay, it's just a greater likelihood. Okay. But it depends on the population that you're looking at. For okay. example, if you know the prevalence of asthma in your population, and if it's 10%, yeah. right, and you use this asthma predictive index, then it can show you at least 50% of children, if you use the index, will show you they've got asthma. Okay. If you use it in a population that's got a higher prevalence of asthma, then the API becomes more predictable of asthma. Okay, so it depend it depends on the population that you're using it in. Another helpful thing with this index, and I'll come to it completely now, is that if it's a negative asthma predictive index, then it's highly unlikely that the child has asthma. And I think that's where the true value of this asthma predictive index comes in. And you got other slides. Slides twelve will show us some of the criteria. I think. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so the major criteria, as you said, I've, I've always asked, 
does a parent have asthma? Yeah, it's I my first that's, question. Yeah, that's a very big, big question. It's a, it's that, yeah. a, big, it's a big point mm -hmm. in, your, in your major criteria. Mm -hmm. The second is if a doctor is diagnosed atopic dermatitis. You just want to explain what's atopic dermatitis to the viewers? Okay, atopic dermatitis is um, dermatitis that you see in a young child. Mm -hmm. It's eczema, basically. Okay. Eczema on the forehead, mm -hmm. on the hands, mm -hmm. on, on the legs mm -hmm. that you see. Okay. And then if you look at the other criteria, then we can go to slide 12 again. The other criteria are the minor criteria, which is a physician diagnosed allergic rhinitis. That's a running nose, huh? That's just a running nose mm -hmm. without, without a viral infection. Okay. That's the important point. And the second part is I was trying to get is, is the child wheezing when he's not ill? Meaning when he doesn't have a viral infection. Okay. That's another criteria. Okay. And your third criteria mm -hmm. is a eosinophil count of more than 4%. That's a blood test. That's a blood test. Correct. We have a caller. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. My name is Zakia. Ji Zakia, go ahead with your and question. Okay, my question is, I, I know it's for children, and but uh, make mouth for asking this question. I've been batting since I've been a little girl. I am on Fox A. I'm an azimuth and an under uh, aspen um, a pump. Every night I'm, I choke in my sleep and I'm bringing up phlegm all the time. And uh, uh, I have to go every now and again to have uh, have myself nebulized. And they put me on steroids that doesn't help me. I went to an ENT specialist, and he um, told me that I've got sinusitis. But I've been through, I've been on steroids. But and every night I, uh, you know, I'm battling to breathe, and that gives me it, it causes major problems because I start getting anxiety attacks. So I need some sort of advice. Sorry, is that, is that, so what are you on at the moment? Uh, the fox A. Yeah. Okay, okay then the, uh, it has also given me the pump, the, the Ash, Ashevan pump. Ashevant, yeah. Ashevan pump. And then also for the nasal spray, he's given me Avimus. Mm. Okay, that's, this is uh, adult medicine. Yes. But yeah, uh, I, no, I, am, <laughs> no, I know it's. A, 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 no, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's not a problem. No. Uh, no, hopefully, I, our specialist can help you today, inshallah. But just to summarize, so you, you're taking Evermus for the nose, for your rhinitis. Are you taking any antihistamine like loratadine or cetirizine? Yeah, or? I was taking loratadine as well. Mm. You are or you, you were? No, no, I stopped taking the loratadine because I'm on so much of other medications, so that's like really knocking me off. Are you smoking? No, I don't smoke. And I've never smoked and there's nobody smoking at, at home. Mm. Also, I notice that when I eat that like cold stuff and if I go to the beach front, there's a different change of atmosphere. Then I start wheezing and I'm and and asthmatic. Oh, when I'm stressed out, I start wheezing as well. Mm. But almost every, I, I, and I'm bringing up a lot of flame. I don't know where the flame comes from, but I'm bringing up a lot of flame. Okay, d don't, don't go away. We just want to see what Riaz has to say. Okay, uh, Jazakallah. Okay, Assalamu Alaikum. Uh, sister, it certainly sounds like you have asthma, okay? But an important differential diagnosis which we see in the, the older age group or the adolescents is, uh, as you mentioned, anxiety. Okay. You know, and, and I, I would okay. think if you have any, any anxiety issues or stresses, then you need to sort all that out. Otherwise, your asthma is not going to be controlled. Did you get that, sister? The, the okay. other thing is, you know, have you had a lung function test? Yeah, that was a, that's what I needed to ask. Yeah. Did you have a lung function test? Yes, I did have the lung function test. And did that yeah. show asthma? Yes, it showed asthma, Jay. So the dose that was prescribed to you in terms of your FOXA? The, um, the 50 stroke 250 Akihela. Uh, yeah, but did the doctor ever suggest That's that you must take more? Yeah, no, he told me I must take in the morning and the evening. So I take every morning and every evening one puff. Okay, so she's on uh, 50 to 50 Akihela. Yeah. Fox A, morning and night. Uh, and she's on the estevent on a the estevent you're not taking every day right no no only when i have a asthmatic when i have an attack when i can't breathe and then I, then i take the pump then i even bought a little nebulizer that doesn't even help me because then i have to, they have to take it to the hospital because the, the home nebulizer doesn't have oxygen so it doesn't like you know it doesn't relieve me so i have to go to hospital in order so when they put me on the nebulizer then i get some sort of relief so she's getting okay. relief with nebulization. Yes. But it seems like her asthma is not optimally controlled. Yes, absolutely. I think... I th I think but sometimes I don't get it. Like sometimes for like oh, maybe for a month I don't... And, but recently, for the last four months, mm -hmm. I had an endoscopy done. 
ever since I had the endoscopy done, I'm bringing up a lot of them. So it's like almost half a cup every evening. Then I have to go and nebulize myself with or steam my face and put in Vicks and everything. Then, then only I can sleep, basically. Then I have to sleep, I sit up and sleep, basically. Otherwise, what I can't did they, Rekia, sorry to interrupt you, what did they find in the endoscopy? Did they find reflux disease? Yes, they found in the endoscopy, they said that I've got uh, chronic gastrite, uh, uh, gastritis and I've got inflammation of the bowel. So are you, they put you on Nexium and things like that? Yes, I'm on, this, I just started taking Nexium a month ago. And did that not help I was you? Previously, previously I was on Pantelop the last 10 years, okay, and that blocks. wasn't working. Yeah. Now, now they put me on Nexium, which is 20 milligrams, which I'm taking. So, yeah, I, I think you know what, you're definitely going to have to, I don't know, Riaz, I'm sure you agree with me, mm -hmm. you're going to definitely need to go and review your diagnosis. Either your, your doses of medication have to be increased, it seems you've got multiple conditions contributing to your uh, wheezing and your phlegm, yes. uh, the reflux, you know, the disease. The reflux, yeah, so chronic yeah. reflux. Yeah, so, you know, there may be some lifestyle modifications. Uh, are you overweight? No, no, I've actually lost weight in the last, uh, lost like five kgs in the last two months. Yeah, I, mm. I, I don't know, but I think Riaz she should yeah. go for another review, eh? No, I think she, I think she has to go for another review. Yeah, with the lung to, function. To, um, to, for, for the endoscopy? No, 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 the no, lung okay. function, eh? Uh, no, I think I think, okay. I think I think Zakia, the important thing is to t find out what's triggering your asthma yeah. attacks. Okay. You know, I mean, I, I'm not a, uh, an adult doctor, but I would say there's something triggering it. Yeah. And until you find out what that is, mm. okay, I don't think your asthma is going to be controlled. Yeah. It could be something like the carpet you're sleeping at, mm. or perhaps there's yeah. mold at home in the bathroom. I'm not sure, mm. but it's you just need to add something else contributing. Exactly. And then, and then obviously when you go to the doctor, maybe you'll do another lung function to see if your Foxy, you're taking the right dose, whether you have to go higher. Yes. Because you may be having a more severe form of asthma than you think. And then that may be caused by something else. Yeah. So you've got to like look at the cause and also at the same time treat what's happening and a combination of factors. You got that, Zakia? Okay, Jazakallah khair uh, for the call. Uh, we're reaching the end of the program. Uh, okay. uh, Riaz, so we're going to be calling you again uh, because we need to get to this asthma predictive index and move on to asthma and its management and, and how things are going to be treated because asthma is a very difficult thing to treat in children because of the mm. f fact that there are some barriers to treatment with the parents not accepting the diagnosis sometime mm. uh, and also the, the, the mm. management is not 100% because like you said there's multi-factors trigger factors are not identified mm. and then the associated conditions. Mm. Uh, so, but I don't know if you want to add anything just as a take home message for now. And inshallah, we'll take the topic further. Sure, if we just go to asthma in the preschool. Just one last message because we've got 30 seconds. 30 seconds. So I think the, the most important, important thing to realize mm. is as a caller pointed out, mm. asthma waxes and wanes. Okay. It's never the same. Okay. It's a heterogeneous condition. Okay. And you can't, you can't look at one thing and call it asthma. Right. It's looking at the history, looking at the bronchoconstriction, mm -hmm. looking at the relief from the bronchodilator. Mm -hmm. All that together is asthma. Jazakallah khair for the program tonight, Riaz, for coming out in your busy schedule. Mm -hmm. And uh, inshallah, we will call you again. I hope the viewers have benefited from the program tonight. And uh, inshallah, Health Matters will be back again next week, Tuesday night, in a regular slot. And from the Islamic Medical Association, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.